welcome to the leader of the SNP, Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I say it's a pleasure to follow the former Prime Minister and perhaps her behaviour in office, like many that went before her, was about dignity, about the importance of the office, of respect, of truthfulness. And the Prime Minister will be well advised to focus on those that have not dishonoured the office like he has done. Mr Speaker, we stand here today faced with the systematic decimation of public trust in government and the institutions of the state, and at its heart, a Prime Minister, a Prime Minister being investigated by the police. So here we have it, the long-awaited Sue Gray report. What a farce. It was carefully engineered to be a fact-finding exercise with no conclusions. Now we find it's a fact-finding exercise with no facts. So let's talk facts. The Prime Minister has told the House that all guidance was completely followed. There was no party. Covid rules were followed and that I believed it was a work event. Nobody, nobody believed them then. And nobody, nobody believes you now, Prime Minister. Yeah. 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 That is the crux. No ifs, no buts. He has willfully, willfully misled Parliament. Order. It's bad enough. Order. Oh, 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 oh. Shh. Order. Inadvertent. Misled the House will be acceptable. Misled the House is not acceptable. So, so, uh, Withdraw inadvertently. The Prime Minister inadvertently told the House on the 8th of December that no parties had taken place and then had to admit that they had. It's bad enough, Mr Speaker, that the Prime Minister's personal integrity is in the ditch, but this murky business is tainting everything around it. It is our intention to submit a motion instructing the Prime Minister to publish the Grey report in full. Will the Prime Minister obey an instruction by this House to publish as required? Mr Speaker, amidst allegations of blackmail by Tory whips, the members opposite have been defending the indefensible. Wait for the report, we were told. Well, here it is, and it tells us very little, except it does state that there were failures of leadership and judgment by different parts of number 10. It states that some events should not have been allowed to take place. That is the Prime Minister's responsibility. If there is any honour, any honour in public life, then he would resign. Where is this? And he laughs. And the Prime Minister laughs. We ought to remind ourselves in this House and 150,000 plus of our citizens have lost their lives. Family members that couldn't be with them. And that is the sight that people will remember. A Prime Minister laughing yeah, at our public. Right. I extend the hand of friendship to all those that have sacrificed. I certainly do not extend the hand of friendship to the Prime Minister, who is no friend of mine. Yeah. Where is the shame? Where is the dignity? Meanwhile, the police investigation will drag on and on. Every moment the Prime Minister stays, trust in government and the rule of law is ebbing away. The litany of rule breaking, the culture of contempt, the utter disdain for the anguish felt by the public who have sacrificed so much. What the public see is a man who has debased the office of Prime Minister, shrinked responsibility, dogged accountability and blamed his staff at every turn, presided over sleaze and corruption and tainted the very institutions of the state. In short, Mr Speaker, this is a man... Well, they can laugh. They can laugh. But the public know. The public know this is a man they can no longer trust. He has been investigated by the police. He misled the House. He must now resign. Order. You'll have to withdraw that last comment. Mr Speaker, I gave the evidence of the 8th of December. And, oh, order, order. You're going to have to withdraw misled. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister has misled the House. 
Unless you withdraw, I'll have to stop, and that's not good. Just withdraw the words. I am standing up for my constituents that know that this Prime Minister has lied and misled the House. Give me the paper. Give me the paper. Certainly misled. I'll give you one more chance. As leader of the SNP, I don't want to have to throw you out. I'm going to give you this chance. Please. Please to power. That man has left out the house. Shut up. I'm sorry it's come to this, and I'm sorry that the leader of the party has not got the decency to just withdraw those words in order that this debate can be represented by all political leaders. Would you like to inadvertently? If the Prime Minister has inadvertently misled the House, then I will state that. Right, we're going to leave it at that. (laughs) Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I'm grateful to the uh, right honourable gentleman for withdrawing uh, what he just said, because he was wrong then. And... uh, he, I'm afraid, is wrong in, the, in, in his, his analysis. And I, 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 I apologise, as I've said, for uh, all the suffering that people have had throughout this pandemic and, uh, and for the anger that people feel uh, about uh, what has taken place in, in Number 10 Downing Street. But I've got, I've got to tell uh, the, uh, the Right Honourable Gentleman that for much of what he said, uh, his best course is simply to wait for the, uh, for the inquiry to be completed. Can I just say, I take it the Honourable Member has withdrawn it, the Right Honourable Member. The, the Prime Minister may have inadvertently misled the House. But, no. should, or, order. To help me, to help the House, you withdraw withdrawn your earlier comment and replaced it with inadvertently. It's not my fault if the Prime Minister can't be trusted to tell the truth. Under the power given to me by Standing Order No. 43, I order the Honourable Member to withdraw immediately from the House. From the House. Remain. It's, it's, it's all right, we don't need to bother. Right, let us move on. Andrew 